All right, welcome back everybody uh, to Enigmatic Electronics. Today, we're, we're in the lab today, but as you may or may not know, uh, depending on when this video comes out in relation to the others, we've uh, secured a new lathe for the shop, uh, LeBlanc, the 1943 LeBlanc, and we're still going to keep the Atlas, the old Atlas Craftsman. So we're going to do some upgrades to that machine. And one of the ones we're going to do that I've been wanting to do for a while is make a collet rack for it. Now, the Atlas takes these little 3 AT collets. Uh, it'll also take a 3C if you've got the right adapter. Uh, we just, we've got these 3 ATs we stick with. And they've just been kind of sitting in a drawer along with, that's the closer. And this is the spindle protector. And this is the adapter that goes in the spindle. All this stuff just sits in the drawer, not real accessible. So what we're going to do is make a collet rack that mounts behind the ways, behind the bed, down towards the tail end of this machine. And we're going to make it, this is a piece of phenolic. It's about a half inch thick, uh, really strong stuff. And we're going to make this collet rack out of this. And we're going to use pipe. These flanges we're going to mount on the bottom and we're going to come out and 45 it down and another flange will mount behind the lathe since our lathe is actually sitting on like a bench top, the Atlas is. So it'll just be a piece of half inch pipe. Should be plenty strong enough to hold it and we got this stuff laying around. We have the phenolic laying around, we got the pipe laying around. Uh, the only thing we had to buy is we didn't have a closed nipple. This will go in here. And I didn't have a 45. That'll go there. And that'll put coming up and sitting at a 45 kind of looking at us a little bit. I think that'll be ergonomic, nice. It'll sit down. We can just, we use collets a lot because they're more accurate and they hold small stuff relatively easy. So we'll jump into this. I'm going to go cut this where we can start and we'll see what it come, looks like at the end. All right. Hope you can see that. We got everything laid out. Uh, we got a place for the big center here is going to be, of course, this is upside down, but that'll go through and be in the center with plenty of room around it. Down here, we're going to have probably a piece of PVC sticking up where this can go around. This can sit in the middle of it. And then we've got a place for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 20 collets here we don't have that many but we're going to have enough space for them nevertheless 20 collets and what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the drill press and drill all these holes I'm going to use these Forstner bits these work pretty good uh, these are designed for wood but they work pretty good in phenolic I'm going to use those and drill all the appropriate size holes here and I'll probably just do that off camera instead of trying to set that up. We've all seen how holes are drilled. And we'll bring you back and I'll show you what we got so far. Okay, so we're back. And I actually laid this out a little different where these would sit a little closer together. And we've got 24 collet slots. Uh, this piece will slide down through and end up sitting right there. Uh, this hole is where this goes with this mounted on the back to support this whole thing. And what we're going to do is we put a piece of PVC in here, cut the length. This will sit around it. This will sit in it. Now I've already cut that piece of PVC to the right length where it protrudes out enough for this to sit in. Clears this. This will sit in without hitting this metal here. It'll be just slightly off underneath. And I faced off one end of it in the lathe and I'm going to take and set you up over there where you can see us how we face off the other part and make it look all nice. Then we will epoxy that in here after. You can see how these holes are raised a little bit from where we cut through with that Forstner bit. Forstner bit works great for this but it does even with backing it up it'll bust out a little bit on this type of phenolic. This this is phenolic but it has like a laminate on it. It's like a it's like countertop material. But, it, you know, always use your scrap, especially for stuff like this. 
and this is the back side you won't really see it we're going to paint this whole thing anyway so we're going to go to the lathe we're going to face that off and then we're going to clean up these holes and probably round these corners uh, where it's not just so sharp and break these edges you always want to break the edges so i'll set you up over the lathe and we'll face that off okay so we've got this this in the lathe and you can just see you can see i cut it off with a pipe with a pvc pipe cutter and you can see how inaccurate this is and it kind of doesn't matter if you're plumbing but for what we're doing we want it to look nice uh, so we're just going to face this off we're going to come in stay about halfway and we're going to touch off right there's our cut come in a little bit and make our cut come in and make a cut and you can hear it because it's off, it's an interrupted cut. And I'll tell you, the one thing I don't like about these mini lathes is there's no way to clamp, unless I engage the half nut, there's no real good way to clamp the uh, carriage to the, ta uh, to the bed. So, and it's, it's pretty loose. So these, are, these are cheap lathes. Uh, we just don't have a lot of space in the lab. If I was doing something that needed more precision or actual heavy cutting, we would take it to the shop. But this is going to do what we need to do. We've got a mark right here. We need to come into this. Now, that we've we've just made standard measurements. This, this isn't machinist measurements. We're just looking to get stuff real close, you know, uh, measuring tape measurements. So nothing super precise. You'll hear that interrupted cut. Should be getting down. Starting to hear a full cut now. And that almost sounds like we're getting close. We got a little bit of a hollow right there. You can still see the mark just a touch. And one more small pass through that hollow. Touch off. Move in. You can hear the full cut right there. Just took the mark off. And this bit is not really designed for plastic. We're kind of asking it to do what it's not made for. So we're rolling an edge here, which my experiment experience if we you roll an edge a little bit anyway with plastic. We're gonna move this. We're gonna bring this in. Just gonna break that edge. position this these legs are very limited in their their movement you see we're almost touching this this chip protector here come back just break that inside edge and we'll sand this a little clean it up but that should be pretty good another thing to note about these this lathe we are almost just broke loose right there. If I turn it much, yeah, number three jaw will actually come loose. So, you know, this this is one inch PVC, which is actually a little bigger than an inch, and that's about the capabilities of the jaws turned this uh, direction. Now, there is another set of jaws that come with this machine that you can put to grab outside, but you can see how small these machines actually are. Um, I would recommend this machine. For someone doing small work it's not a bad machine it, it does require a little bit of upgrading to get the full usefulness out of but yeah anyway we can turn PVC on it uh, so off camera I went ahead and drilled four holes here and this will be the mounting for this on the back and you can kind of see 
that goes there. PVC will go in there. That sits around and that inside. Um, of course, we're going to epoxy that in. So, what I'm going to do is go ahead and tap these holes. And I, I drilled all the way through because I'm not real concerned about that. Uh, it'll be easier to get to if something ever goes wrong with us. These screws, but I'm going to tap these out for 1024s, which should be plenty strong enough to hold this. And by drilling all the way through, it allows me to tap all the way through instead of trying to bottom out. And it gives me a full half inch of thread in this finale. So I'm going to go ahead and tap all these out and we'll come back and I'll show you this part mounted and then we'll epoxy the uh, piece of PVC in. Alright, so we got these tapped out. Uh, we put this, we went ahead and put this together and because we're not as well supplied at the lab as we are at the shop, I didn't have any flathead machine screws so we will change these out. We'll probably even go ahead and paint it but then we'll change these out when we get to the shop to install this to some flathead screws. These will work. These are uh, pan head machine screws but they're just not I like using the correct thing and this requires flat heads. As you can see we went almost all the way. Got good almost a half inch of thread in here. This should hold. And it comes out and it's 45. There's another pipe that's going to be here. But you can see that this sits at a nice comfortable angle up behind our machine there. It'll sit. We can get to everything good. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is epoxy this PVC in and we're just going to use some five minute epoxy and we're going to hope that this is actually going to still work. This has been sitting around the lab for a little while. Alright so we, we finally got our honey consistency epoxy out of here. It's two part. Just gonna mix it good. Well, I hope this sets up. Like I said, this stuff's a little old. Uh, we're gonna have a quite the string of beeps here in five minutes if this is not hardened because I'm gonna have to clean all this out. But I don't feel like running to the store to get more. Now what I'm gonna do is put it in in the hole here. The reason I'm telling you that is you got to kind of be strategic about what surface you apply this to. If you put it on this, when you go to slide it in, it's going to push out, which it might do a little bit this way too. But if you put it in the hole and you put this in, most of it's going to push down. And when you put it in, I usually put it in and twist this a little bit. And we want to try to get it kind of centered. In there now you'll notice there's a gap around here and the reason that is is we could have put this in the middle of the machine and bored this hole perfectly but we're not our little micro mill here I don't really have the tooling for that so we just used a Forstner vet that was close and it's real close and we're just gonna we got a good layer of epoxy around it we're just gonna give that five minutes and hope this old epoxy actually hardens and if not you might see steel pretty mad here <laughs> we're going to give that a few minutes to harden and come back all right uh just to catch you up we got to finish this thing up at the shop actually uh, we'll have to cut some stuff at the shop but up until now i just want to show you the tools we've used is mostly stuff people's got laying around uh pipe wrench to tighten the pipe up. We used standard drill bits and some Forstner bits. Spray paint, pencil of course, measuring tape, a knife, uh, some epoxy, screwdriver, a tap and die, or a tap and tap handle, excuse me. Uh, a PVC pipe cutter, which if y'all aren't familiar with this, maybe some people haven't done plumbing. Uh, these things are inexpensive and I love them. They don't cut very straight, but they do cut quick and easy. Use a file to knock down some of the edges, 
square to mark and lay out and sanding sponge that's that's some of the basic tools we've used um over there we have our delta drill press and sander that we used and hiding back over here in the corner is just a standard chop saw that we use there uh, you can see actually some of our steampunk gun projects in the back we'll, we'll do a video on those eventually some costuming props there but we cut this phenolic with a chop saw it cuts pretty good and we will I'll show you the tools I use after we get it done at the shop uh, there's gonna be we're gonna have to cut the pipe to the right length so there'll be a I'll show you the pipe cutter I use and rethread it and I'll show you that uh, it'll be some pretty simple tools there at the shop for that and then we'll paint the stand install it on the lathe and we'll finish this job up all right well sorry you don't get to hear me cuss the the epoxy did fine you know it's a little old it's set up so it's going to sit above the, the lathe this will go there we'll have room for the spindle adapter this will sit in like that and we'll have room for all of our collets which we only have like uh maybe four or five collets the ones we use the most but this will give me an excuse probably to fill up the the set of these three ats uh, there are a few companies that still make these three ats they're not as near as widely used as five c's or anything but this gives us plenty of room for our collets and heck we could probably even put some uh number two morse taper stuff in here i haven't checked it uh but it looks for about the right size to stick maybe some dead centers in but that's how that'll go so get everything out of the drawer of course we're going to paint it and we've got another one of these flanges that'll mount behind the lathe a piece of pipe will go in that it'll go in here and of course we'll have to cut this pipe to length we're going to do that at the shop uh that'll probably be about that much shorter uh, here's a little tip though uh, as you probably know um, the lab we, we keep limited supplies here at the lab but we also have a full functioning shop and we have a lot of supplies there this is a little trip tip always protect threads on pipe like this wrap some electrical tape around it most of this pipe comes with a plastic plug but we get a lot of you know you always grab used and uh, surplus stuff if you can that's where you get stuff cheap and it's perfectly good this was we got a bunch of this surplus pipe and it didn't have any of the caps left on it so just wrap some electrical tape around this or something to protect those threads that way you don't end up re-threading every piece you grab because it's been banged around uh, so a quick tip there for you especially in a shop situation where you have a lot of supplies laying around and and multiple people working too because not everyone is as careful as the next person but that's it so far the next time uh, you see us on camera here we will be in the shop finishing this thing up getting the pipe cut to length and thread and I'll show you how to do that uh, we don't have anything fancy we do it all by hand and we'll paint this thing up mount it to the machine and I'll show you the final pictures all right so we got our pipe marked where we need to cut it uh, I'm gonna cut it off with this pipe cutter here it's a rigid number 2a I'm just going to get this lined up. Tension on it. Make sure we're going pretty straight. I'm just going to move in a little at a time. Go around. What this does is kind of just roll form this in two. Just like cutting any other kind of tubing. That's it. Good clean cut. Now I'm going to take this out, take it over to the sander, and kind of break that edge, deburr it a little bit before we start threading it. Alright. Got a bucket sitting down there. It's our like scrap metal bucket, small scrap. And when you thread pipe you use a lot of oil and there's going to be a lot of 
little shavings come off using this rigid pipe threader here. I usually just kind of get it started there a little bit. We went over to the sander and we, we tapered the end of this just a touch. I find that that gets this started a little better. side of this die. I'm not going to bore you with the whole process on camera. We'll come back when I'm done with this. So there's our finished thread. Now we did have, this is an older pipe vise. We did have a little bit of slippage there so I had to, to sand that a little bit. And we took this thread after I was done. I took it over there to the wire wheel and just kind of hit it on the coarse wire wheel to clean up any burrs so to add to the tools that i mentioned a while ago you're there's pipe cutter the pipe threader and pipe vise uh, you could probably do this in regular bench vise if you could hold it good enough the thing about threading pipe is it's a tapered thread so unlike running a die over a rod or something where once you pass you know you get past the thread it's done this is cutting thread with every tooth all the time because even though you've already cut it, you're cutting it deeper on the next pass, taking off more material. So it's a little harder than threading standard using a standard die. Uh, you got to keep a lot of oil on this, and it'll still, you know, mess the thread up here or there. It's I, I personally have never been able to make a perfect thread with this hand system, hand die system here for pipe. But we're going to assemble this, clean it up, paint it, get it installed on the machine. Well, there it is, complete on the machine. Painted, we painted it machine gray. Looks a little different from the, the actual machine here because the paint on the machine is much older. But that's it. Yeah. This is going to kind of entice us to buy the rest of the collets. Get a whole set put together. It would not, these were a little big for a number two Morris taper. Uh, uh, dead center would just kind of just fall right through. But we were able to put our a few of our tailstock drills up here, tailstock chucks. Uh, these don't have a tang, so they're not suitable for really anything but the tailstock of a lathe like this. We can't put them in a sleeve. So, And the LeBlanc that we're working on has a number three Morse taper in the tailstock. So these are pretty dedicated to this machine. So they can go over there. We're, we're not gonna fill up all these holes with collets anyway. But that's it. It, uh, excuse the mess, we were using the machine, but it just kind of mounts down behind that pipe flange. At the tailstock, out of the way, but accessible. More accessible than just being stashed in these drawers down here. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. hope it might get you to make one of these for yourself for your machine. Uh, they're pretty handy. <laughs>